Hey people, it's Nyan's talking. I would like to find El Tigre Negro uh, Instagram page who talked about the Igbo democracy and it was something quite interesting, so I decided to look it up. Now I'm using a page called Igwe Buike, Buike Research Institute. So forgive me if I'm mispronouncing that. So here we go. The structure of the Igbo society accounts for the distinctiveness of the Igbo social, political, economic, educational, and religious approaches to reality. Right from inception, the Igbo society has been an open society constituted by individuals possessed by an adventurous spirit. It is one in which the constituents individuals, constituent individuals are clothed with self-confidence and the belief that one individual is as good as the other. The belief has an imprint on an individual openness to new, ide- to new realities, new ideas, new methodologies, and ability to adapt to new circumstances. When the missionaries came to Igbo land, the Igbos were open to Western education, accounting for their academic successes evident in the graduation of large numbers of Igbo scholars in 1966, uh, 1965-66 from various academic institutions. The Igbos are fiercely progressive, republican, and democratic. As progressives independent of the government, they build their own schools, roads, town halls, village libraries, dig their own boreholes, etc. As republicans, they had no king of any significant power. They operated a village system in which Decisions concerning the future of their kingdom were reached through discussions, consultation, dialogue, and compromise. As individuals and individual communities, the Igbo compete among themselves in the area of success. They are known for autodetermination or a certain radical independence of mind, a certain basic sense of individual sovereignness, which coexists with the communal sovereignty of Iku, Naibe, Obodo, and MBA.23. This radical independence of mind, for good or bad, permeates the whole of the Igbo person's character. They are therefore not tied down by religious fundamentalism or traditionalism as in some parts of Nigeria. Their open society, freedom from the constraints of fundamentalism and traditionalism, allowed reason and reasoning to progress alarmingly. This radical independence of mind, republicanism and democratic tendencies would certainly affect the socio-political system of governments that would emerge among the Igbo Africans. This work employs the concept of Igbo Igwebuekrasi to articulate the Igbo African traditional democratic system of governance. Although some Western perspectives have denied democratic elements to Africa, Igwebuekrasi is yet another significant effort in investigating the possibility of such a political system. The varied, uh, variegated political systems have emerged over the years, distinguished by the different kinds of constitutions of defined responsibilities and privileges. Among these is monarchy, a system of government in which the king is considered an excellent man who surpasses all citizens with knowledge and virtue. There is also aristocracy, a government by a few men of virtue. From aristocracy has emerged polity, a government by the middle class, moderately rich and of good behavior. We also have oligarchy, a government by unscrupulous rich men who have no regard for the poor. Ethnocracy, a type of government where representatives of a particular ethnic group hold high number of government posts, more than the other ethnic groups to the detriment of others and use their position to advance a particular ethnic group. Theocracy, a type of government by the clergy who claim to have divine power. Totalitarian is an authoritarian type of government controlled by a dictator having complete control of the government. Cacistocracy, governed by the worst men, governed by the unprincipled and unqualified citizens. Cratocracy, governed by those who are strong enough to seize power through force, undue process, or cunning. There is also democracy from two Greek words, Demos, which means people, and kratain, which means to rule. Put together in Greek, it means the power of the people. It is in this regard that Lincoln, cited by Salami 2004, described democracy as government of the people, by the people, and for the people, under the rule of law. In the contention of Gaiakia and Pusia, uh, 1997, 1975, the concept, the people, points to the power of the people to choose who to rule them in accordance with the general good of society, and that they set up by themselves the constitutional rules, principles, and procedures of governance. Carter, 1978, described democracy as a system that is altered by time and experience, always changing, infinite in its variety. Sometimes it is turbulent, however still valuable since it has been tested by adversity. As a political structure, Salami, in 2006, whereas the democracy emphasized the sharing of power among people of various categories. For Brecht, 1959, it emphasized that values should not be forced upon any people against their will and stipulates liberty, separation of power, and the sovereignty of the people. For Sabine, 1973, averse that it must involve mutual concession and compromise as a way of arriving at decisions. From these perspectives, Chidley, 
Chidili, 2012, averse that free setting points are noticeable from the definition of democracy. The democratic government is not monotypic but diverse in nature, that even in its diversity it is changing, it is strictly based on the rule of law. From these noticeable points, Chidili concludes that the mutability of the capacity of democracy provides elbow room for it to be an adaptable system of governance that can exist anywhere in the world, including Africa. Number three, Igbo Igboocracy as an African democracy. When, tra Africa, when traditional political systems are discussed, they are often described as monarchic or aristocratic. This is a perspective that is evident in Arab Bofa, 2007, who argues that the traditional political systems in Africa had no place for democracy. European and African political thinkers see democracy as a system of government that began in Greece and was imported from Europe to Africa. Contrary to the opinions of Arog Bofa and his like minds, I would argue that democracy is a cherished African value which exists in pre-colonial Africa as a pattern of African administration. It was already in Africa before the encounter of Africa with the West and thus Africa cannot be understood as a passive recipient of democracy. Before the advent of the West to Africa, the Igbo Africans of Eastern Nigeria practiced Igwebocracy, an indigenous dem democratic government designed by the people and for the people. Igwebocracy is from the Igbo word Igwebocracy, which is a combination of three Igbo words and a Greek word, kratain. Igwebuekwe can be employed as a word or used as a sentence. As a word, it is written as Igwebuekwe, and as a sentence, it is written as Igwebuekwe, with the component words enjoying some independence in terms of space. The three words involved, Igwe is a noun, which means number or population, usually a huge number of population. Bu is a verb, which means is, Ike is another verb which means strength or power. The Greek kratein means to rule or the system of ruling or governance that governs a particular set of people elsewhere. First put together, Igwe Buekrasi means a government of the people or rulership by the people or the community. <clears throat> As a society in governance, the community determines the practice or the socio-political life of the people while putting into consideration the particularities and peculiarities of individuals in Igu where bureaucracy followership is as important as leadership, since leadership is not a one-man show or hierarchic or aristocratic system. Members are fully involved in decision-making and implementation of such decisions in issues that are that affects them. Here the people are the focus. Igwe bureaucracy is a viable African species of classical and contemporary democracy. It is a democracy in the African context, taking into account the African values and identity. It builds on the African experience, history, circumstance, and situation. It is democracy that involves with the sign of times, realistic and articulating itself in view of its positive future. The ontolo ontolo ont ontolo ontological foundations of Igwe bureaucracy. I apologize if I mispronounce words or struggle with them. I'm just trying as I go. Kano 2015a and 2015b averse that Igwe Buekwe is based on the African sense of community, which is the underlying principle and unity of the African philosophical experience. It is anchored in the African worldview, which according to Irugbo is characterized by a common origin, common worldview, common language, shared culture, shared race, color and habits, common historical experience, and a common destiny. And I want to point out this is a very different conception of democracy and freedom as it is in the Western ideological sense. Democracy and freedom in the ideologic in the Western sense is all about individuals and about how people are different and how people all have their own different desires. The, according to this, the African sense of democracy and freedom is that we all have a common sense of history, culture, and community which binds us together as to why we are coming together. Mabiti 1970 classically proverbializes the community determining role of the individual and writes, I am because we are, and since we are, therefore I am. Igwe Buekwe, as a complementary philosophy, understands life as a shared reality, and it is only within the context of complementary that life makes meaning. Life is a life of sharedness, one in which another is part thereof, a relationship though of separate and separate entities or individuals, but a joining of the whole. Kanu 2015c, 
Os Igwebuekwe provides a ontolo- on- ontological horizon uh, presents being as that which possesses a relational character of mutual relations. According to Kano, Kano 2060A and 2060B, it represents the perspective that to be is to live in solidarity and complementarity, and live outside the parameters of solidarity and complementarity is to suffer alienation. To be is to be with the other in a community of beings. The traditional structure of Igwe bureaucracy. Two theories have emerged in response to the question of the origin of the Igbo. There is the Northern Center theory, which according to Onwu Jiogu, please forgive me if I'm mispronouncing, I'm not an, an Igbo, this is not my language, posits that the Igbos migrated from five northern center areas, namely the Semitic center of the Near and Far East, the Hamatic center around Egypt and Northern Africa, the Western Sahara, the Chadian center, and Nok center. And I want to point this out for people who say that all that the Egyptians were not black, this is another uh, theory and proof that the Egypt that our African populations are linked to Egypt and the ancient Egyptians are black and were black. There isn't some unique Egyptian culture that existed separate from the other black societies of Africa. The second historical hypothesis is the center theory of Igbo hotline. According to Isha, the early migrations of the proto Igbo originated from the areas termed as Igbo hotline, such as Uweri, Okegwe, Orlu, and Aqua divisions. According to Shaw, 1969, Afibo, 1981, and Nozi, 2002, and Chikwendu, 2002, the dispersal of the Igbo from the Igbo hotline dates back to the time between. 2555 BC and 800 AD. Whatever theory is adopted, Ajebu reverse that as the Igbos dispersed and permanent settlements developed, communal living led to the emergence of economic and social and political institutions. From these settlements emerged leaders who became centers of authority as social groups developed. Effective administration systems emerged to regulate social relations. This was founded on egalitarian and democratic structures. The political organization was constituted by different levels of autonomous democratic government which exercised political, social, and economic control over the lives of the people. These autonomous democratic governments included the nuclear family, the patrilineage, umuna, the maximal lineage, and the village group assembly. The nuclear family was a bedrock of social and political organization referred to as Ezi na Uno. So that's another thing. Ezi na Uno, it consisted of a man, his wives, his married and unmarried sons, unmarried daughters, and the servants or slaves, if any. The father was leader of the household and was possession of, in possession of the family of four, which is the symbol of authority, justice, law, and uprightness. The father was responsible for directing the affairs of the family, how it was done in consultation with his senior sons and wives. The patrilineage or extended family is the next unit of political organization after the... And I want to point just this thing out, where he talked about the man being the head of the household. This is another thing. You see some of these programs, they talk about... uh, matriarchy being common to Africa and that women were always in charge. That's not necessarily true. There are different types of African societies. But anyway, let's keep going. The patrilineage or extended family is the next unit of political organization after the nuclear family, which is referred to as the Amura. It is composed of a number of families that have a common eponym- ep- eponymous father. Uchenda, 1965, defines the Ununa as a territorial kin unit which subdivides into compounds EZOB. The head of this political unit was the oldest male member of the extended family, also known as the Okpara, and had the Ofo of the extended family in his possession. This, according to Ogbu Kagu, is based on the gerontocratic nature of the Igbo system of government, even though SHA 1976 averts that the important place given to elders does not mean that all elders have equal rights to speak. According to Opone 2012, the leader is usually a grandfather or great-grandfather. In the contention of Olise and Nwosu 2002, the Deokpara presided over meetings, sacrifices, issues of inheritance, settlements, or dispute among members of the extended family, marriage, allocation of lands, and the representation of the family with other extended families. In decision-making, the Deokpara worked in consultation with the other heads of the extended family, who constitute the extended family. Decisions were arrived at through dialogue, consensus, no nukwek, Kolita, compromise, cooperation, consultation. 
Iba Izu. The maximal lineage is the biggest social, socio-political organization of the extended family. This is referred to as Idumu in Ogbo, which means quarter. It is made up of a number of extended families who are linked by a common putative ancestor. This major lineage is held by the oldest male among them. He holds the O4 of the major lineage and presided at functions concerning the major lineage and was considered, was considered as a sacred person with taboos and rituals accompanying the violation of his authority. In his exercise of authority over the major lineage, uh, Ajegbo averts that he works in consultation with a large assembly comprising of senior household men, titled men, priests, men of honor, intelligence, and wealth, etc. The village group assembly was the biggest socio-political group referred to as Obe Village. Ajebo 2013 observed that it was composed of a number of major lineages who are descended from a common ancestor or different putative ancestors. Owu Jogu 2072 refers to the Obe as Federation of Autonomous Settlements and Biozimori 1972 as wards. The assembly was the highest authority, with its members being senior males of households, professional hunters, priests, honorable and wealthy men, warriors, titled men, and medicine men. The leader of this assembly varied from one village to another. In some, it was headed by the Council of Elders, a group of wise, knowledgeable, courageous, and transparent men. Makwet, 1972, refers to their authority as a collegial authority exercised by the chief of the various lineages living in the village. In some, the oldest members of the Council of Elders referred to as the Okpa, and in this case, he becomes the custodian of the Ofa, Ofo. The supreme head of the assembly took decisions in consultation with the constituent members of the village assembly. Consultations, consensus, and compromise were necessary elements in resolving issues and democracy. The village square, Amanazuku, Zuko, Ora, usually a common place, was the arena of assembly. Igwe, bureaucracy, and nationhood. Igwe, Buekwe carries the idea of the purpose of having a nation, the purpose of coming together. It is rooted in the ideology that when human beings come together in solidarity and complementarity, they are powerful or can constitute an insurmountable force of strength, and at this level, no task is beyond their collective capability. While solidarity, solidarity and complementarity of what use is the nation? The nation must be one in which everyone participates in the construction and reconstruction of the political community. The people must agree that they are a nation in spite of differences and conflicts and consent to build it on the grounds that individual and corporate success depend on national success. For if a na nation fails, its individuals fail as well. As an indiv indigenous democracy, it, begin, it began, began as a fulfillment of the collective desire of the individuals that constitute a place. However, before then, there was a situation of lawlessness with no authority, morality, sense of right or wrong, and justice. It is a state that can be comparable to the Hobbesian state of nature, where every human being and action was guided by personal interests. The rule of action was the satisfaction of personal appetite and nothing else. The result of this is quarrel, fights, and conflicts. First, it was a state of war and insecurity, inundated by perpetual danger, fear of death, as conflict, struggles, and war prevailed. In a situation of this kind, there were obviously no progress, development, agriculture, navigation, and industry, as no one permanently owned anything for fear that the stronger would come and snatch it away from him or her. Everyone used the means within his power his power to preserve his life. Hobbes, 1946, described the depredation of this state. No knowledge of the face of the earth, no account of time, no art, no letters, no society, and worst of all, continual fear and danger of violent death, and the life of man was solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. While this was true, the state of nature was not an entirely disorganized society, as its members were guided by human reason, that is, the law of human nature, or law of nature. The law of nature obliged them to connect to the other, to love the other, to respect the rights and dignity of the other. The problem at this point was that there were those who transgressed the natural law, with no organized system to punish or protect the other. And since there is no intervention, the end is resistance from the other and first war and destruction. The emergence of Igwe bureaucracy, I just say Igwe from now on, as a political system of government was due to the result of dissatisfaction with state of affairs, a state where man became a wolf to his fellow men, homo homini lupus. lupus. It emerged as an attempt to avoid the inconveniences of the state of nature. First, Igwe did not emerge with the creation of human beings. It is a product of development and sophistication, a process of learning and improvement. It was developed by the people with the passage of time and encounter with new experiences. It is a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. 
It speaks to their particular and peculiar experiences. By this time, there emerges a common authority that intervenes in the relationship between members of the society. While coming under Igwe, the members of such a society do not lose their freedom and rights, but rather they consolidate their freedom and rights by having the others be involved in the preservation of such rights and freedom. It now becomes not an individual thing to fight for freedom and rights, but a community affair, as the loss of the rights and freedom affect, of the other affects me. This makes the fight more fruitful and more powerful, more realizable. It is a system where individuals must submit to the will of the majority and to act contrary to a wage a war against the will of the community. It is in this regard that it is said that we, Igwe, Buekwe, there is power in number. Igwe, Buekwe, okay. Ibe, says number seven. Contrary to the argument that there was nothing democratic in the African traditional system of governance, Igwe is a rudimentary stage, reveals indices of democratic values. For instance, in the Igbo political system, particularly during decision making, it is not the eldest man that imposes his will upon the will of the people, upon the people, but decisions are reached through discussions, consultation, dialogue, and compromise, which might take the shape of imposing the will of the majority or the minority, and thus reveals the democratic value that uh, does not see the community as a constellation of impersonal forces, but rather a complex of human beings and human interests that upholds the ethos of resolving human antagonistic interests through negotiation. This should not be confused with decision-making on the principle of the supreme right of the majority in the case on the discussion of the majority prevails not over but upon the minority. They prevail upon them to accept the proposal in question, not just live with it, which latter is the basic plight of minorities under majoritarian democracy. In a consensus system, the value acquiescence of the minority with respect to a given issue would normally be necessary for the adoption of decision. In the rare case of an intractable division, a majority vote might be used to break the impasse, but the success of a system must be judged by the rarity of such predicaments in the working of the decision-making bodies of the state. During decision-making, the perspective of every lineage in the village is represented in the pr uh, presence and contributions of their representatives. It can be compared to the House of Representatives, a structure that provides a space for the genuine meeting of minds, for the interchanging of opinion and understanding. Decisions arrived at this council is not enforced through policing, but what Macret called collective pressure. At the center of these African traditional political structures was the rule of law. The choice of the king or leader in Igbo traditional societies or access to the throne was based on equal opportunities. The aspirants were treated as equal candidates and were subject to the same rules and treatments. Conclusion The foregoing study reveals that we find in Igbo African traditional democracy could be described as a participatory democracy. The democratic tradition was, however, disrupted and undermined and devastated by the colonial political infrastructure. The strike at African indigenous institutions affected virtually all aspects of the African life. The religious social formation and ensured democracy, such as the Ozo title holders, elders, deities, masquerades, etc., were disregarded, disorganized, and divested of their political roles. When the colonial authority came, traditional leaders were made warrant chiefs and subject to the authority and supervision of British political officers first making them no longer accountable to their people but to the British political officer who appointed them. Among, although the traditional, the indigenous system of government may not have well organized as in the West, it is possible that out of them could have been formed a distinct, unique political theory that will better suit the African people instead of the ad hoc Western government system on Africa. However, uh, this study is a contribution to the development in studies on African Renaissance. It affords African Africans the opportunity to look into their past and see systems that were of value and that can still contribute towards the growth and development of the continent and first help to solve the long pre predicament situation or crisis of Africa countries. I would like to thank this uh, website for giving me this source. I would like to thank you for have sat through here and uh, listen to this. So please go and subscribe. And I also just want to point out that this, that just as Igbos were taken through slavery into America, I've seen something that Professor Black Truth talked about. And one of the things is that he talked about in the founding of Black Wall Street. This was a video he talked about in the death of Toni Morrison. He, he said, when Black Wall Street, black men did not have power to oppress their women or to force them to do anything. And yet yeah, still black women cooperated with black men to build Black Wall Street. The idea that uh, one group had to simply force another member of the group to, do, uh, to go along with them in order to build is not part of the African way. Part of the African way, even in the black American, even in the black American culture, is that 
all members of the society will willingly work together for a shared goal. You, the idea that is evolved in the Hobbes idea of politics, that someone has to have overwhelming power and force in order to make law and order and for decisions to be carried out, is not part of the African political structure. Well, that's a bit of a tangent from me, but anyway, please comment, share, and subscribe. Peace.